Hi, this is me, um, Douglas Hall, on my channel, Chosa Night. Um, I'm going to be talking about another alternate history scenario, but different from my previous video. This scenario is, what if K-pop didn't exist at all? Or as, or as, at least as we know it, be like, oh! <laughs> um, like I said, this is different from my previous scenario about, you know, K-pop under a hypothetical Korean empire. Um, as you know, K-pop affects many people all over the world, not just those um, in South Korea. Um, although um, K-pop is primarily about music from Korea, um, yet it also includes other aspects of Korean pop culture or entertainment to an extent at least. Um, such as, but not limited, to um, Korean dramas, movies, uh, beauty products, and of course IT tech like um, Samsung or LG. Um, but what would it be like if there was no K-pop? Well, first things first, we have to talk about the history of K-pop and what it is um, to, um, to this day, and then the ramifications of what if without it. So... The earliest known um, K-pop history origins is said that it is believed to be from the origins during the late Joseon Dynasty when foreign missionaries came in to help the early uh, modern development of Korea or basically the late Industrial Revolution. Um, so the earliest known recording is supposedly 1885. That um, for at least a historical reference, that was during the reign of Kojong when he was still king of Chosan, not the emperor of Korea just yet. And so, um, it is also said that um, it is um, an American named uh, Henry, and I, and I hope I'm not butchering this name, but if I do, I apologize. The last name is El Pen Zenezer. He um, is an American who began teaching American and British folk songs um, at school. Um, he and four, all, uh, four others brought in the um, um, Protestant Christian, uh, Christian faith into Korea. And he also uh, contributed to the modern Western style of education in Korea. Um, he died in 1902 um, where he was trying to save a Korean girl um, from drowning. Um, these um, early Korean pop songs were known as uh, Changa. Um, the early um, K-pop music, you know, continue to go on in development or evolve or sing or whatever or perform, uh, even after Japan annexed Korea in 1910. Uh, Koreans would use um, their feelings uh, against the Japanese rule um, through music. This would actually, ironically, inspire um, um, several Japanese composers to create pop music, particularly, um, I, I hope I'm not butchering this name, um, Masago uh, Konga in uh, 1920, and the music is supposedly known as um, um, Aning Aninga. Um, that has mixed traditional Korean uh, music uh, along with gospel music uh, that American evangelists uh, brought into Korea back in the 1870s. The um, next part of uh, development part of Korean pop culture um, wasn't really developed uh, until Korea was finally liberated from Japanese rule um, after Japan was defeated by the United States uh, and the other allies uh, during World War II in 1945, uh, which of course that which five years later, it led to the post-war division of Korea, um, which many of you know is, you know, the Korean War, and, you know, now we have the two North and South Koreas. Uh, Western culture was introduced uh, into Korea on a small scale, like a few Western-style bars uh, or clubs playing Western music. Um, more American and world culture um, in general was slowly being more poured into Korea after the Korean War ended um, from 1950 to 1953, which was, that was primarily due to the continued U.S. military presence in South Korea, not only against North Korea, but also against um, Communist China and the Soviet Union. 
um, several American um, um, famous stars uh, performed uh, U and U.S. O shows uh, for the U.S. troops uh, in South Korea, like um, uh, Nat King Cole, uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Louis Armstrong. Um, in 1957, um, the American Forces Korea Network uh, Radio started its broadcast, spreading the popularity of Western culture um, throughout Korea at that point. Even some um, Korean um, singers gained international popularity, like the Kim Sisters uh, performing in Las Vegas and entered the, even the U.S. market back in 1953. Um, skilled Korean singers regard performing for U.S. troops uh, as a good method to earn money, um, especially since South Korea at the time was still a poor country. Um, here's a side note. North Korea had a similar economy to South Korea at the time, yet the North was considered to be more economically wealthy than South Korea until the, into the mid-1970s, which was when um, South Korean President Park Chung-hee started introducing massive economic um, reforms, uh, um, which was due to you know, the money that Korea got from Japan in the um, 1965 um, treaty. Uh, when Beatlemania um, reached uh, Korea, uh, that's where uh, the first um, local rock bands um, began to um, appear. The first one was supposedly known as Ad 4 in 1962. Um, um, as more and more Korean singers were university students uh, or graduates uh, who were heavily involved uh, by American culture and lifestyle at the end of the 1960s. This would also include the hippie movement. Um, in the 1960s, they made um, large hearted, hearted music, um, unlike their predecessors at the time. Uh, these Korean um, singers also um, opposed the Vietnam War like um, the American hippies. The uh, younger generations of Koreans born after the 50s growing up um, now had preferred the American lifestyle at that point. So, however, um, President Park Chung-hee um, banned American pop music and Korean rock music in the 1970s due to their association with sex and drugs. Um, the godfather of Korean rock music, uh, Shin Chong-hun, was in prison in 1975 due to a marijuana scandal. And the Korean government at the time also banned the songs due to their Japanese origin, which was to bolster their anti-Japanese um, cred um, cred credentials uh, at the time. In the, in the 1970s, DJs uh, um, so also started to become uh, more popular. Following that, we also have the era of ballets, uh, which took place in the 1980s in Korea. Um, um, ballets um, helped to celebrate uh, the 1988 uh, Summer Olympics in Seoul. Um, the, and finally, we get to the modern development of modern um, K-pop, which finally began in the 1990s. Uh, Korean pop musicians uh, incorporated partly European pop music, but mostly American uh, pop, popular music. Um, Lee So-man uh, was educated in Korea and was exposed to the um, trends of American um, music. And he founded um, SM Entertainment in 1995. Uh, this company is most responsible for certain um, Korean uh, pop stars, such as, but not limited to, Shinhwa, H.O.T., S.C.S., uh, Fly to the Sky, and um, uh, Tongbang Shingi, and of course, um, Boa. Um, Yang Hyun Sook formed um, YG Entertainment in 1996. Uh, this group is known for um, establishing stars like uh, Big Bang, um, 21, and um, Blackpink. And of course, we have um, uh, Park uh, Jin Young. He established you know, y uh, JYP Entertainment in 1997. This group is known for making um, stars like the Wonder Girls, uh, Miss A, Izzy, and of course, their... Um, uh, their number one popular group and one of my favorites, Twice. Um, the group um, known as uh, Son Taiji and the Boys uh, began in 1992 and they 
marked a revolutionary moment in um, K-pop history. Their popularity among teenagers shifted the Korean music industry um, towards teen-centric um, pop music. Um, icon groups of young boys or girls were soon formed to cater to the a growing audience of teenage of teenagers. Uh, H.O.T. was the first idol boy band where they debuted in 1996. Um, the group had a huge, was a huge success and where fans even began to copying the, um, uh, the group's is, um, hairstyle and fashion. In fact, I remember um, growing up as a kid that um, the older generations uh, that I, the people that I knew, I saw photos of them I was like, wow, they really did look like H.O.T. back then. <laughs> and it was also during the 1990s where talent agencies began to market K-pop stars um, by using the idol um, business model that was already in use in J-pop at the time. Um, talented people were scouted, selected, and trained to appeal to a global audience through like um, um, formal lessons or residency programs and many others. These programs, however, are considered to be very, very brutal. Not many actually make it through it uh, based on what, uh, what news I've seen on, on, on YouTube or just in general. Um, over time, Amer Korean American um, artists have become uh, successful due to their fluency. Um, such efforts in K-pop were, were made to increase the marketability of K-pop, yet also increasing the soft power of Korea, thus even affecting um, the official Korean um, government policy. The 1990s um, also saw a reactionary movement against um, um, mainstream popular culture. Um, with the rise of illegal underground music and punk rock bands. The 1997 um, financial crisis also prompted um, the uh, Korean entertainers to look for other markets. So H.O.T., for example, they uh, released a Mandarin language um, album and the group Diva um, released an English language album in, in Taiwan. Uh, K-pop's increasing popularity uh, soon forms part of the Hallu or the Korean wave, especially by the start of the 21st century. Uh, the Korean wave is the popularity of Korean culture, particularly from the South and other countries or just throughout the world in general. K-pop is increasingly um, appearing in um, Western charts like the uh, Billboard, for example, or, or Billboard, <laughs> sorry. Um, by this time, uh, K-pop has been fully embraced by the uh, uh, South Korean government as a means of projecting Korean soft power throughout the world. Uh, soft power, in political terms, is the ability to attract co-op rather than coerce, which is what hard power is, which is what uh, nations are used to doing ever since, you know, beginning of time, you know, like, you know, World War II, World War I, um, 1970s. Uh, the 1700s and so on and so forth. Um, H.O.T. was eventually disbanded in 2001 along with various other uh, K-pop groups from the 1990s um, where many of them also eventually become, became deactive or inactive by 2005. Solo stars like Boa and P, with P stands for Rain by the way, um, they become very successful by this time around the 2000s. The, the success of Tongbang Shingi or their letters known as DBSK or um, TVXQ. Um, after their debut in 2003, it marked the resurgence of idol groups to Korean entertainment and the growth of K-pop to the or Halut or the Korean wave. Um, this led to um, the second generation of K-pop groups formed as a result. So it's like such as, but not limited to like Super Junior, SS501, Big Bang, Kada, uh, 21, Girls' Generation, and 4 Minutes. Uh, K-pop groups by the start of the 21st uh, century have begun seeing success elsewhere in Asia. Um, Baby Vox became popular in other Asian na nations after releasing their song Confident and promoting it. Um, during the 2002 FIFA World Cup tournament, although I didn't remember at the time because all, I was just into soccer at, um, for that event at the time, which is that was the whole point of the World Cup. 
Um, anyway, we have um, Boa. She became the first K-pop star to reach number one on the Oricon music chart in Japan. Um, P or Rain um, performed the sold out concert to 40,000 fans in Beijing. Uh, Baby Vox also tripled or toppled the uh, Chinese music market in 2003. So by the mid 2000s, a huge portion of the East Asian music um, industry or market, it was dominated by K-pop. And by 2006, um, South Korea's is, um, cultural exports, which includes you know, the TV shows, the movies, computer games, um, rose to 2 billion US dollars, maintaining an annual growth rate of over 10%. Um, just to help um, for a little comparison, in that year, Japan accounted for nearly 68% of all of uh, K-pop exports, which was ahead by China with 11.2% and the U.S. just at 2.1%. Um, 2, 2 um, the sale of concert tickets also proved to be um, a lucrative business for K-pop. Uh, Tongbang Shingi's is um, a Toto Shingi live tour in Japan uh, had sold over um, 850,000 tickets at an average cost of 109 US dollars, thus generating a total of 9.26 million US dollars in revenue. Of course, you know, elsewhere in the world, you know, K-pop continues to succeed, uh, to see success. Um, Psy with uh, Gangnam Style uh, was the first YouTube video to reach uh, 1 billion views. Um, of course, there were other several attempts, um, failed attempts, uh, made by the uh, uh, various K-pop entertainment companies to try to break into the English language market, like BOA, Girls' Generation, and CL. Um, it wasn't until BTS that had finally succeeded in breaking through that barrier where they won the top social artist at the 2017 uh, Billboard uh, Music Awards. The group BTS also performed their song uh, DNA at the American uh, Music Awards. The following year, uh, uh, the, the group also reached number one on the Billboard 200 group with their song um, Love Yourself Tear. BTS also performed at the uh, New Year's Eve celebration at Times Square on December 31st, uh, 2019 in front of 1 million spectators and a television audience of over 1 billion people. Now that's the end of history. So I have to cut this short because this video is particularly long. So I have to condense it down. So um, I will end this and I will start making um, part two. So this is just the history part, but there's more to go. So please watch the next video, which will include the cultural impact and the impact without K-pop. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.